Hey everybody, I'm Amber Ryan and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a different kind of video that I've done before, um, that I haven't done before. Wow, words have been hard today, so bear with me. Uh, I'm going to be doing a book haul video. I've been seeing them more and more often here on BookTube and decided to give it a shot because I have been buying a lot of books recently and it's been wild. So we are starting back in uh, the end of June on to now, which is July 18th. So yeah, so about a month's worth of books uh, to share with you guys. So let's get started. So I believe this batch was bought in on June 19th. Um, and I forget, I think it was a Books A Million trip. Uh, that is the closest bookstore I have to me in Missouri. So I actually have to travel about half an hour to 40 minutes to actually go to a bookstore and books a million is the only one there uh it's the closest to me it's an easy drive uh it's a very you know it's all interstate so it's a very quick easy drive for me however i don't really like uh books a million selection they don't have a very big one compared to uh barnes and noble which i'm used to um so, uh, but unfortunately the closest Barnes & Noble to me, which I know some people don't prefer them, but uh, that's the only other bookstore I actually know of and that I've been to regularly. Um, the closest one I have to me is like an hour to two hours away from me. I have two different ones and different directions kind of deal, so um, I don't get to go there very often. So, but I prefer shopping over just ordering. I know I'm strange like that, but I, I have a mixture of both where I've went in store to buy, to buy and uh, there's some that I've ordered. So I've got a mix of both here today. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I just wanted to mention that. Uh, so most of these probably did come from Books A Million, but I order from Barnes & Noble most of the time when I order. Um, and I do prefer Barnes & Noble personally, uh, just out of the two, so yeah. Now that that's out of the way, <laughs> this is the batch that I actually bought, uh, there's six of them I believe, uh, that I bought at the end of June. Um, so and a couple of these will look familiar to you if you've been watching my videos. Uh, first I'm going to mention uh, places we've never been. So that was a this month read, I believe. Yes. So this was part of July of my July TBR clue. Um, this was one of the books I had to read this month and I have already read it. So uh, this one, if you've watched that video, this may be familiar to you. Um, and next is another book that uh, is on this month's TBR that I've yet to read, uh, Paper Towns by John Green. Um, and I think I'm actually gonna tackle this one tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I've been looking forward to reading this one. I enjoyed the movie and I don't know. I, I've heard mixed reviews on it, so I'm excited to see for myself whether I enjoy it or not. And I will report back to you guys in my wrap up video. But uh, yeah. So also, this was by Casey West. I don't know if I actually said that. So I did end up getting another Casey West as well. Um, I had never read her before this month. But I uh, have seen that she has several books and they're all about like romance tropes, like cute little romance tropes. So I thought I'd give her a shot. Uh, and this one is Love, Life, and The List by Casey West. And so this one I and The Places We've Never Been popped up on my Pinterest a few times. And it's kind of been going on, um, you know, been floating around. So I decided to go ahead and give them a shot. I thought they were cute. Um, Places We've Never Been was cute and sweet, but it was more of a uh, younger read, I believe. So, uh, and I have a feeling this one and all her other books may be the same way, but I'm going to give them a shot because it was a cute little romance uh, thing, and I, I did kind of enjoy uh, Places We've Never Been. So we'll see if I like this one as well. And if I do, I may buy some of her other books because she has several. Um... Yeah, so next I also got, uh, so this is Ever After by F.T. Lukens. So I actually bought, and I may have shown it in a video previous doing, during uh, TBR Clue, um, 
Spellbound, which is, I think is this author's most recent one, and I bought it when it came out, so I got like the special edition, I think, with the hardcover, all the art, it looks so pretty, and this one looks just as pretty, um, so yeah, I'm interested to find out if I like this author. I didn't even realize this was the same author as the Spellbound. I haven't read that one yet. I haven't read either of them yet. So I am intrigued though. Um, it's, they both sound very interesting. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I, I'm looking forward to reading this one. Hopefully I'll get around to it soon. Um, next is one that I've kind of been interested in reading. Uh, it came out as a series on Netflix, which isn't always a good thing, uh, but it, it was actually like a trilogy of movies. Uh, if you guys remember Fear Street, uh, it came out like three weeks in a row. Uh, they had a, would have a movie upload and they were so good. I really enjoyed those and I had kind of seen these books in passing because, uh, when I was a kid I did enjoy Goosebumps and Arl Stein's writing and all that. Um, and I think I read some of his other stuff as well. Uh, Nightmare Room, I believe, was the other one. Uh, but this one is Fear Street, and so I got the whole honking, uh, the beginning. And I don't know if this is just a tie-in for, uh, yeah, it says coming soon, a Fear Street movie, so maybe they put, uh, most of the first of the series together. Um, I want to say it's like the first three books or something in one book, so, and I thought that would be easier for me to consume, honestly, because I was like, I don't want to buy a bunch of small books, you know, and this may be for younger readers, I don't actually quite know, because R.L. Stein is mostly about, uh, you know, younger readers, uh, you know, if, if Goosebumps didn't say anything. But I do quite still enjoy the idea of Goosebumps. And so, and I, you know, I grew up, it's very nostalgic to me. I even, for the nostalgia room on Clue, I did want to start reading, uh, sprinkle some Goosebumps books in there just for the heck of it. Because um, I feel like they'd be fun little cozy reads for me. So, but yeah, and I think, so yeah, I think it's the first three books of the series. Um... And I don't know if they've changed them at all. Or no, it's the first four, I believe, actually. Uh, it says The New Girl, The Surprise Party, The Overnight, and Missing. Uh, but I think they just put them all in one book for those who like the Netflix movies like I did. So I think this is a great place to start and at least see if I would enjoy the series, you know. Um, so yeah, I... I I'm excited it's a thicker one for sure but I'm excited to see if I actually enjoy you know reading it because I did enjoy the movies pretty well and lastly from this batch is one that I thought about buying a while back and it was actually on the bargain shelves so it was only like six dollars the tenth girl and you, you can even see <laughs> it was only like 597 bargain price so that's why I grabbed it uh, by Sarah Faring, and yeah, it just, it sounds super interesting, I don't know much about it, but it did pop up on my Pinterest, and I'd saved it on a books to read board that I keep, and I add stuff to it pretty regularly of just random books that pop up, whether, and I don't know much about the books, I don't even know what genre they are half the time, I don't know, uh, what age group they're for half the time, um, so this one's definitely has to be a horror and I don't know if it's meant for young readers or not, but uh, it seems really interesting and I will be ha more than happy to find that out, but so. <laughs> and I think that was actually the only hardcover I bought that time and it was the one on sale, so a little wild to me. Okay, so moving on to a little bit further into June at the end, I believe this was June 26th, I ordered. Uh, there is one that I don't physically have because it was a pre-order. So if you've been watching my videos and you may not have, uh, one of my favorite authors, my favorite horror author ever, Darcy Coates, is coming out with a new book called uh, Where He Can't Find You. And it sounded so good. I'm super excited for it. So I did pre-order that book. And I am really looking forward to that one. I don't think it comes out till around Halloween time, I think. So I have a little bit of time to wait for it, unfortunately. But I did order that one. <laughs> so it is in with this batch. 
and yeah so I also got uh, the asylum novellas which if you watch my wrap-up video or this month's TBR clue you will know that I've been tackling the series uh, and finally finishing it off because I loved the original trilogy and I never finished with the prequel and these so I'm finally wrapping it all up and I'm finally uh, reading all of them. I just read uh, Escape from Asylum for TBR Clue this month. I just finished it today. So uh, this is the last book I have. And it's novellas. I think it's like four novellas. So uh, basically short stories. And so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of going to be sad when it's over. Uh, but I'm really excited to finally like wrap it all up and finish it all because it's kind of Woo, phone, you're loud. Um, it's kind of been something that's been in the back of my mind for so long that I've really been, because it was one of my favorite series. And so I just always thought because one was the prequel and one was like separate novellas that it wasn't worth reading. But I'm glad I'm finally getting around to finishing them up and reading them. So I did order this one with this batch. Uh, and I'm really looking forward. This is the last one. I'm hoping I will fit it in next month. Um, I'm going to try and weasel it in. And even if it's not with the game, it's going to be a short read. It's just some short stories. Um, so I may just weasel it in there and uh, read it next month with my TBR. So, uh, but yeah, so look forward to that one. <laughs> Um, also, I bought another one that I found on Pinterest. I don't know how I find them on Pinterest so often. Uh, The Haunting at Bonaventure Circus by Jamie Jo Wright. Woo! Um, this one, I don't like the cover, like the material that it's made of and the glossy. I don't like the feeling of it. Um... It feels like it's a self-published book. So maybe maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Um, it says it's romantic suspense. Is the genre on the barcode. I've never really heard of that publishing house either. Um, but yeah. So for some reason this one had came across my feed. Um, one way or another. And it sounded interesting. Anything haunting or circus related. I'm automatically intrigued. Um, I did read Water for Elephants. I believe last year. Um, or this year. No it was last year. Um, so anything circus and haunting related. I'm always for. Because that's another one of those. Like asylums. A circus is one, another one of those settings. That's always freaky. And uh, so it's a perfect setting. For you know anything paranormal. Or horror related. So I'm always looking for that. And this sounds like it may just be. Uh, you know a little freaky. Because it is. it does have the word haunting. In the title. So we shall see. But I'm, I'm really interested in uh, anything with like abandoned buildings or anything abandoned like that as the setting also is very exciting for me. Like I really enjoy those settings and those environments. Um, so I, I really enjoy that. <laughs> so uh, that's another reason why I'm looking forward to this one and like I said I don't know much about it I'm hoping it's good I am a little worried uh, maybe it is it's not self-published I don't think uh, because there is a publishing house in the back but it's one I've never heard of so I'm and I've never heard of this author either it's kind of a, a random buy on my part but I'm hoping it's good I don't know anything else about it so I'm going in blind and I kind of prefer it that way most of the time so but yeah so be expecting that one maybe to pop up on my TBR soon. And next is actually one I found on Amazon randomly. And then it kept popping up on my Pinterest. And then it popped up somewhere else. It's one of those uh, your phone hears or sees you like checking on something. So it keeps popping up kind of thing. Uh, Tastes Like Candy by Ivy Tholen. Now this one I'm almost positive is a self-published one. Um, it, you know, it's, it looks, it has that gloss again that I don't like, but, um, all, otherwise I'm kind of excited. It's supposed to be more of a retro, uh, vintage type themed book and it's supposed to be horror, which I'm always for. And I think it'll have a fun setting again with the circus or carnival theme. I think, um, I don't know much about it. I don't, 
Uh, and the blurb is so in such tiny font that I don't want to even bother reading it to remind myself of what it's about. But I, I really am interested to read this one. But it's just a little out there, you know. And um, I, I kind of love the little vintage retro type stuff like this, you know, that has like the aesthetic, you know, that theming to it. So that's <laughs> it'll be a fun one to read, I think. And it is a shorter one, so I, I think I will enjoy this one. Uh, just a little fun, a little sprinkle of fun in there. And then opposed uh, to that one, uh, this one I ordered when I knew I was going to go to New Orleans for my birthday. I don't know if I've mentioned that enough times. Um, <laughs> uh, that, that trip has been the best trip. Um, so anyways, I bought this book. I was looking for books, uh, that, you know, had New Orleans as the main setting or environment, uh, that, you know, the story had taken place there or something. And so I was originally going to do a video of like all books inspired or written in, um, or took place in New Orleans kind of deal, uh, to kind of get ready for my trip and kind of get in the mood and all that. And then, uh, so I found this one. I had, I've heard of this one. I think when I was younger, I nearly read this one. Um, it is called The Casket Girls by Alice Arden. And then I actually received the book. And, um... Yeah. <laughs> and believe it or not, it was really hard to try and find books that took place in New Orleans. Like, I own a couple myself that I knew of, but they were for, they'd definitely be more nostalgia books because uh, they were for, you know, the younger, younger readers. And they would have been good books to reread, you know, short little books. And I thought about doing that. And then I have a couple secondhand books that I know nothing about, but they just took place in New Orleans. So that's all I knew. Um, but yeah, I couldn't, even like researching and trying to find more, I couldn't really find any. Uh, and I guess I just wasn't looking in the right places. Um, but yeah, it was kind of an annoying because, you know, you'd think New Orleans is just the prime spot for anything uh, crazy or reckless inspired, horror, supernatural. I mean, there's so many shows that have taken place in New Orleans. So you know it can be done. And I don't know if I just couldn't find anything because I wasn't looking in the right place. But if you have any good books that took place in New Orleans, let me know down in the comments below because I struggled. <laughs> but this one, like I said, has been floating around for a while. And it always seemed interesting. I never got around to reading it when I was younger. And now that I actually have it in my possession, I know it's like a trilogy, I think. It is so big. That is so daunting to me. So it'll probably be a while before I actually get around to reading it. And if I do, it'll have to be a short month where I don't have much on my TBR because that is wild to me. And actually, when I was in New Orleans, I went to a bookstore and I'm about to mention, I was about to mention that anyways, um, because I do have a selection of books from New Orleans. Um, but when I was there, I actually almost bought the sequel to this because they had the sequel in that bookstore. Um, but yeah, I, it's just, it's wild. <laughs> So I don't I don't even know how many pages that is. I'm kind of scared to look, um, and I don't need any more reason to not read this. <laughs> so, but yeah. So that was the last of that batch. Um, okay. So now I have a random one that I recently received and ordered. Uh, it had to have been earlier in July. Um, I don't actually know. I just got it a couple weeks ago. Uh, and it was an individual buy, I think, from Amazon. So I'm just th randomly throwing it in here. Um, but it's the sequel to uh, The Hollow, which I read uh, last month on my TBR. And this is the sequel, The Haunted, uh, by Jessica Verde. And so, of course, I bought the sequel. I do eventually plan on, con plan on continuing uh, that trilogy. Um, hopefully, I'll fit it into either next month's TBR or the month after that. It's another thicker one, so I don't know how I'm going to feel. But um, 
I just wanted to let you guys know I did buy that one and it did come uh, at the beginning of this month so I had to include it in this video but it was an individual buy so yeah I I'm interested to see where this uh, trilogy goes next I did hear the sequel is better than the first one so I have high hopes unlike I did the last one which I, I kind of had high expectations for the last one and I was kind of very disappointed with that one so I'm really hoping this one uh, tops it and uh, really you know starts giving me some answers because there were so many loose ends left on that first one like I wasn't pleased with how that one went so very excited that I have this in my possession and I actually almost bought the third one uh, yesterday um, and I just I didn't I talked myself out of it but I really just wanted to see how this one went before I fully you know committed but even though after this one I definitely would have to commit because it's only a trilogy so I'd only have one book left um, but yeah I usually take it one book at a time <laughs> so but I did buy this one so I will be continuing with that trilogy um yeah moving on all right so finally we are getting to the books i got while i was in new orleans earlier this month it was like the first week of july um uh, i've said this so many times but i went for my birthday i turned 25 on the 7th uh we left um early morning on the 5th um after 4th of july and we drove 11 hours uh straight to new orleans and that the road the trip there was actually so fast I didn't even I didn't read the entire trip I had taken books with me I'd planned on reading some of my TBR because they were like road trip wanderlust related and I was anticipating that and then that entire time on the road we were just we talked the whole time we had a good time uh, and I was just enjoying you know it's been a while since I had been on a road trip so and I I actually quite enjoy road trips so I was just enjoying it, having a good time, and living in the moment. I didn't want to have my face constantly in a book. And it was fun to just talk with uh, my friend and co-worker, Laura, who went with me. She was driving the whole time. And uh, it was just, it was a fun time, you know. And uh, the only time I kind of dreaded and didn't like was the Delta area. Um, going through past all of these crop fields. Um, and that was the least you know and that it went all the way while we went into passing into Mississippi and I did not enjoy that part it was so boring I nearly fell asleep a couple times and there was just nothing to see because it was all flat ground crop fields and I'm from an area where there are non-stop mountains and scenery there's a lot of nature a lot of you know st a lot of trees and a lot of stuff to look at you know a lot of pretty scenery and so to drive through a bunch of crop fields it was very insanely boring um but anyways i digress <laughs> um so i did go uh, i was there for four nights um we stayed at the marquee um which is a blue green vacations resort or whatever um it was on the corner of the french quarter so we could just watch walk and do the whole french quarter everything um and I may talk about this more in its whole separate video if you would like to hear more about my entire trip in New Orleans. Um, but yeah, we we got there um, on the afternoon of the 5th. We stayed there for that night. All we did was have supper that night and then we spent the night at the marquee. And then the next day was when we started doing all of our stuff. So, and then we had like two full days of stuff that we did. And uh, we stayed there in New Orleans. And then finally... I believe it was the 8th uh yeah it was Saturday the 8th we uh got up early and we left New Orleans and we went to Laurel Mississippi and then uh after shopping and seeing where uh, the show hometown is filmed and uh you know hanging out in the downtown area and just having a good old time uh we finally decided around it was probably afternoon sometime that we were just going to drive uh, straight back home because it was going to be you know costly we were thinking about going to memphis and we've been wanting to do that um and then we also thought about driving off to Biloxi for a little while. Um, but it would have been, you know, like $400 for one night. And it's like, that's ridiculous. You know, we're already uh, a little closer to home. And we could do it, you know, be there late. So we got home around 10 that night. So, yeah. <laughs> I probably went into too much detail already. But I love talking about the trip because it was so fun. 
and I feel like so much happened. I feel like I tackled a lot of my fears and anxiety on that trip, and so I'm super proud of myself for doing it and going. Um, but yeah, so while on the French Quarter, we went to a bookstore um, called uh, Crescent City Books. So I did buy a few books from there. And I'm also honestly trying to remember where I bought books from where. Because I bought books from all over New Orleans. <laughs> Okay, so first things first, on the French Quarter, there is a uh, Madame Laveau's Voodoo House. So, uh, it was a really fun place. Uh, it was stocked full of voodoo dolls, and all of it was good juju. There was no bad juju allowed. We even tried to, like, get a, a voodoo doll uh, just for the heck of it that said, the, you know, with the pins and everything, and they didn't even have them. Uh, it was all about positivity. Um, there was some, I actually got one for creativity. Um, there was some to help with prosperity, um, help with money or give good luck. I got my mom a couple for good luck. Um, but yeah, just stuff like that. And from there I bought, I was like, it's in New Orleans. I had to get some like magic books or whatnot just for the fun of it. And I got the book of Candle Magic by Madame Pamita. And I haven't actually looked into this one yet. Um, but yeah, it's like the ultimate guide to candle magic success. And I just thought, you know, candle magic sounded like so much fun. And I thought it, at the least it'd be a very interesting read. So <laughs> that was like one of the very first books I bought in New Orleans at uh, Madame Laveau's Voodoo House. Um, if you don't know what that is, I would definitely look it up. They don't allow pictures or videos or even FaceTime in the store, which is crazy to me. Um... But yeah, it was it was such a fun place. Honestly, it was so cool. I actually got my very first tarot deck there uh, while I was there. It's a glow in the dark tarot deck, and I've I've always wanted to try that. I've always wanted to own a deck, and I finally caved and bought one. And I, it was my birthday, so I was like, why not? You know, and it was so much fun. Um, yeah, for now, I'm gonna say this was the only book I bought at Madame Laveau's Voodoo House. Um, because there were several other places I bought books too, so we're just going to keep moving on. But I know this one was bought there for sure. Um, moving on, um, trying to think. So we did go to Crescent City Books, and I did buy, I think it was just these two. Oh, I may have actually bought this at Madame Laveau's as well. Um, Ghost Hunter's Guide to New Orleans. This was in almost every place in New Orleans, though. A lot of these books were so, I guess they're generic to tourists, you know, so they're all over the place. So I kept seeing this one pop up everywhere we went. Um, and I didn't even read it while we were there or anything. I just thought it was an interesting, fun thing. And uh, so maybe I'll read it and then hopefully someday I will go back to New Orleans because I would really like to revisit. There's so much to do there. And uh, but I think this one was also bought at Madame Laveau's Voodoo House. Um, creepy, isn't it? <laughs> I've always, I'm always like into the ghost hunting shows and stuff too. So it's right up my alley. Uh, and then um, the next day, I believe, or maybe it was later that day, we went to Crescent City Books on the French Quarter, and I got Murder in the Bayou by Ethan Brown, an actual book, um, <laughs> and this one apparently does have a documentary series, I think six to eight episodes, the guy said, and he said it was very interesting, so I'm going to have to look it up and watch that while I'm reading this. Um, I think it'll be an interesting time, so it is based on real events, um, so... I'm very intrigued to read this one, especially since I've actually been in New Orleans. Um, I, I just think it'll be a fun time to read. So it's more of like a true crimey thing, I think. So, but I think it'd be fun. And then I also got uh, Ghost Stories of Old New Orleans from there by Jeanne D. Levine. Yeah. Um, I also got from Crescent City Books and the cover alone with the little skeleton hand drew me in and ghost stories of New Orleans I was like oh I have to have to and so that I think it'll be a really fun read as well so uh, I got this one as well uh, and they were a little high priced uh, that store the store wasn't at all what I expected it to be I was kind of hoping for it to have you know, common books and everything, but it was more of a secondhand book place, and they had one section for brand new books, and that's where I got those. And I don't hate secondhand books, uh, but he had like the really old books, 
um, of like all different stuff that just didn't, you know, wasn't what I was looking for, you know, so, but yeah, and I think the final three books that I bought in New Orleans were bought at uh, Basin Street um, Visiting Center, I believe is what it's called, and that is where we went and met for our tour of Cemetery St. Louis, uh, St. Louis Cemetery Number One, which you can only go in with a tour, and it's the oldest cemetery in the city, and uh, we went Basin Street Station. Uh, visiting centers I think what it's called and it was really cool it had like an old train uh, thing there I actually got pictures of it and uh, they had a really cool gift shop there as well they had so much stuff uh, that I wanted to buy and I did buy some stuff there but I also got some books uh, one of them being The Last Madam A Life in the New Orleans Underworld by Christine Wiltz so this one's definitely more of an adult book um, it's about the last madam of a brothel and about that life back in the day of the underworld in New Orleans and you know living through that life so I thought it'd be an interesting read it's kind of different than what I usually read um, but that's kind of what drew me in and I kind of loved uh, the cover so I am interested to see how this one goes um I also bought a couple I mean it was New Orleans guys keep that in mind I bought a couple books about voodoo dolls uh this one was a voodoo hoodoo spell book and I don't you know a lot of people don't believe in it and I I mean some of it I'm just like I don't even know I don't take it seriously it's more of a fun thing um tarot I do quite enjoy I was like it's it's a fun thing it's New Orleans you kind of just gotta be wild and get some you know crazy stuff from New Orleans and say you did and you know have a story about it and uh, I did read a little bit into this there are all these different kinds of spells you can do and whatnot and I thought it was interesting and then uh, lastly from there uh, the voodoo doll spell book Everything just came flying at me. Okay. A mess on the desk. <laughs> so this is the last one I bought there. And I did read a little bit into this one as well. And it seemed very interesting. And I was like, it would be fun to just make a cool little fun voodoo doll like the ones that ha they had in Madame Laveau's because it was just super fun and they were you know super funny and you know it's more positivity and it's not about the real deal or anything it's just for a little uh, kicks, kicks and giggles you know so I thought it'd be interesting to just have this and I thought you know it'd be interesting to hear like the history of voodoo dolls maybe and uh, I think this actually tackles some history from all over and all of the religions and everything and uh, where it all came from so I thought that was interesting um, so yeah I've got that one as well okay now we're getting to the big guns that basically started this whole video idea of me wanting to do um, <laughs> okay so yesterday I went back to books a million um, like I said, I haven't been very happy with the Books A Million lately, at least with mine. Um, yeah, it's just too small, and they actually recently took out their cafe, and so there's really nothing going on there. Um, they didn't have much of a big selection of what I was looking for, um, and they don't, they're just a smaller store, um, so it's kind of hard to find if you have something that one genre that you're really into they just don't have much of that one genre because they're trying to get so many genres in there that they don't have much of selection in each one kind of deal and they've recently went bagless which is cool for some people you know and i understand the whole thing about it but maybe offer you know reusable tote bags and everything and that's kind of what i did uh yesterday because and i would have bought more books yesterday uh, but they didn't offer like shopping bags at least like a, you know one that stays in the store like ba Bath and Body Works does or something you know and I don't know if it's just my books a million or if that's just something they don't do uh, I think Barnes and Noble even offers like bags for you to shop in and put books in while you're shopping that way you buy more books that's like the cleverest thing to do um, but mine doesn't do that so unfortunately I didn't get as many books as I originally hoped for I had leftover birthday money that I wanted to spend and didn't spend it all because of that so now that I'm done ranting <laughs> because of all that at the end of after getting all my books I did buy a tote bag 
uh, which says always write and it has this typewriter which I it's really dirty right now or I'd show you and maybe I'll insert a clip anyways but I have an old typewriter a royal typewriter and I absolutely love it it's one of my favorite things that I've ever bought and so I do love typewriters I love that vintage thing so this was cute and luckily it was only 15 bucks and I think if I do continue going to Books a Million, it's kind of iffy at this point. Uh, if I keep going to that one, I will take this bag with me. I don't know if that's actually allowed. I don't know how things work. Uh, they may actually try and get me to rebuy it. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, so moving on to the newest books in my collection. I haven't actually unpacked them since I got them, so uh, this will be wild. Um... <laughs> Okay, and there were a couple that I did plan on getting uh, when I went in, and I, there are some more that I planned on getting that I didn't get because I didn't have enough arm strength. Um, but yeah, so I went to the front of the store first because I usually skip the front of the store, um, but this was like the TikTok, the book talk area or whatever, and the most recent, uh, you know, the big hits recent, uh, recently, and... This one I've seen floating around for quite a while, uh, Twisted Love. I know there's a full series on it, and uh, by Anna Huang. Um, and it's supposed to be like a ice skating type of romance, I guess. So, and I, I'm kind of trying to get more into the romancy stuff because some of them are really cute, and I do enjoy reading that. Like especially, I used to read that on Wattpad all the time, and now that there there's actual books, you know, around that, it's kind of for some reason I just haven't been into that. I've been more, uh, I've been more into the mystery stuff for a while. So this year is the year that I've been trying to expand my horizons and read other genres, especially with the Clue TBR game. So this is one that <laughs> I just randomly selected. Uh, next I have The Wrath and The Dawn, and I hadn't heard of this one. Um, by Renee Ahedia. So, I hadn't heard of this one, but it was, you know, the buy two, get a third free. And, um, so I kind of just randomly selected it. I read the blurb, it sounded good, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go with it. Um, I need some more romance uh, in case I land in the romance room on the game. So I needed to have, you know, more variety to choose from. So that was just one of them. Another one that was a buy to get a uh, get a third free was the Agathas, another mystery book. I was actually running low on my mystery stuff. Um, I feel like I was running low on most of my stuff actually, but really I have a ton of books, so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I'm getting tired of seeing the same ones over and over again on my shelves. So, but I don't know much about this one either. But I know it's a mystery, and I had actually seen it pop up on my Pinterest as well. And, um, there is a sequel to this one I'm just now seeing on the back. So, we'll see if I enjoy it or not. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> so I just found, uh, so I did buy another Casey West book. Uh, The Fill-In Boyfriend. So this was another one that had popped up on Pinterest when her other two that I own had popped up. And I was interested in it then, and I didn't originally find it when I bought the other two. But I did see it randomly uh, when I was there yesterday. So I went ahead and scooped it up and bought it. And I am actually a little excited to read more of her books. Uh, just because they're so cute. Uh, they're so sweet. Uh, they're adorable young romances. So I, I quite enjoy those little uh, refreshing reads um, where you don't have to be too serious and you can just kind of enjoy it and kind of cozy. They don't take very long. Um, so yeah, uh, I have that one. <laughs> I think it's becoming like a guilty pleasure or something. Um, and I think I've seen this one around as well, um, but I don't actually know much about uh, When Stars Come Out by Scarlet St. Clair. Um, it just sounded interesting. And I had never, I think I say that too often, sounds interesting or it's intriguing. I just, I need to widen my vocabulary, okay? Um, <laughs> I say the same things over and over because it's like, what else do you say um, when you have so many good books that you are actually excited to read? 
Um, and this one seems more paranormal, which is exciting because I, I've been looking for more of that. I want more supernatural stuff. So, uh, so this sounded very, I don't want to say interesting or intriguing. <laughs> Anyways, I really want to read this one. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's been a long day. Okay. Next in my bag of goodies. <laughs> I don't know if it ever actually ends, honestly. Um, the Summer of Lost Letters by Hannah Reynolds. And this one kind of reminded me of uh, Letters to the Lost. Um, if you guys... Ooh, this book feels good on my face. It's cooler. Um, uh, this book kind of reminded me of Letters to the Lost, which I had read on a previous uh, TBR Clue. I think it was actually when I first started doing that game, uh, or was it last year for my challenge? Anyways, I read that, and this one reminded me of it, but it's completely different, and I love the idea of random, you know, inheriting random letters from a lost loved one, and reading them, and, you know, going through that and experiencing it, so I thought it'd be fun to... Uh, once I found this one, I had to get it. I thought it'd be fun to read. Aha! Uh -huh. So, okay, so I keep mentioning because this month, uh, the Asylum series has made its way back, um, into my life, uh, because I, I had to read Escape from Asylum and was planning on reading the novellas. Now, with that series back in my life, I kept mentioning that I never finished and that I want to reread, uh, the Miss Pergrine's Peculiar Children series. Uh, and I own, I believe, the first two books, uh, Hollow City and the original Miss Pergrines. And I have read both of those, and I stopped there. Um, and that was when the series had started getting really big. And I was like, I read, ha, huh. I was, you know, a fan and had read this before it even got big. You know, it was kind of one of those things. And so I, ha I decided I was going to go ahead and reread the first two and continue on with the series eventually. I'm going to start trying to mix those in with my TBR um, in every game. I'm going to try and mix some of those in. Um, and so I went ahead and bought uh, the third book. So I'd have a new, no, you know, I'll be in as an incentive uh, to reread and keep reading this series. Um, so I got Library of Souls. Um, and it is the third novel of Miss Pergrine's Peculiar Children. So, and luckily this one's a little shorter. Hollow City was a thick boy. Um, and I'm hoping Hollow City is the sequel because I own it and I did read it. So I'm hoping I didn't read out of order or anything. I remember it being a little confusing and it was a bigger one. I might have to look it up, but... Anyway, so I did buy that one because that is a series I want to pick up again and I actually want to read all the way through. Hopefully I'll get interested in it again. I remember the sequel just wasn't that great to me, um, but maybe, I'll, you know, I'm, and I have to like reread both of them to get back into the series because it's been so long. I don't remember some of it. Uh, the first one I've read, I think, two or three times, but I'm going to go ahead and reread it and get back into it again and, uh, yeah, this one's next. And if you haven't read the Miss Pergrines books, do not go off of the movie. The movie was crap compared to the books. Let me tell you. Just a fair warning. Uh, definitely books are better than the movie. Let, just saying. Okay. <laughs> so moving on. Um, I think there's only three more left in the bag. Okay. Oh, I did get it. Okay, <laughs> so I did get the third and final book of the Hollow Trilogy. I thought I passed it up. I didn't think I bought it. Uh, the Hidden by Jessica Verde. So now I have the whole trilogy. That means I'm going to have to read them all. Well, dang. <laughs> and they both ended up in this video. That's crazy that I forgot I got it and it was, I just got it yesterday. Wow. Wow. So now I have like the full trilogy though. That's kind of exciting to me, honestly. As the stack gets bigger, you're going to see it in the corner. <laughs> okay, so this is another book I didn't know it existed. But I had read, I don't know, 
it's in my favorite books stack on my shelves but uh there is a book called the bone houses and i read it last year super good book i was so into that book and i then i found out it was a standalone and i was really sad but it was such a good book and i really enjoyed it well that same author um with the same style it looks like on the cover uh came out with another book uh the drowned woods by emily lloyd jones and i didn't know it existed until yesterday i happened randomly upon it it was right next to bone houses has the same art style and you know the same aesthetic on the cover so i have high hopes um however it seems like this one is a complete different uh you know it's its own standalone they're both separate from each other and maybe they take place in the same universe and it's just different stories. Um, I don't know if they're going to tie in together at all. Um, but I am super excited to see what happens with this one. Because I don't think it has the same characters unfortunately. But I'm super excited uh, to find out. You know, just more into that world if it is the same one. And her writing style was awesome. So I... I'm so excited for this one so I had to get it I couldn't pass it up wasn't what I was expecting to get but I'm super glad I did and I have one to look forward to for sure so <laughs> and lastly uh, is another one that I was actually planning on getting when I went in uh, and there's another part uh, from um, um, and it is another part of like a duo um, I have the first one there's only two books um, I don't know if you call it a series if it, there's just two books I don't think you do I forget what you call them a duet maybe um, but I had the first book already and I've had it on my shelf for a while and I've yet to read it and I decided I do want to do some books where I read the whole series in one video or you know all the books in the trilogy in one video and I figured you know the doing a duet in one video would be an easier job to tackle especially because it's Darcy Coates uh, my favorite author so this is house of secrets the sequel to house of shadows which i also own so eventually i'm going to read both books same time uh one right after the other um i want to read them together uh so there's no breaking them up you know no amount of time in between uh separating them i want to read them back to back and actually enjoy it and have a good time and i think there'll be a couple cozy reads for me uh to kind of just bundle up or you know cuddle up and you know read so and maybe I'll have their own video, basically, of me just reading the two. But, um, and I look forward to that. So, I, I really enjoy Darcy Coates writing. Uh, enough that I've pre-ordered, I think, two different of her, different books of hers. Uh, because I, yeah, I think I pre-ordered Gallows Hill was the last one. Maybe? Don't hold me to that. Um, but yeah. So, I've got House of Shadows and Secrets um yeah <laughs> and that is the last of the books i bought yesterday uh that came that i bought with the tote bag so <laughs> what a haul and that is basically what started the idea of this whole video that has turned into probably over half an hour long but uh and i'm not even done yet guys one second while i put these away <laughs> I'm gonna have so many books to put away after this video. Okay, so this week, actually just yesterday as well, um, I did receive some secondhand books as well from friends of the family, two different friends. Um, one, they regularly give me like some secondhand books uh, that they think I will enjoy because they are avid readers themselves, but they don't really reread and they don't want the books to go to waste. Um, so yeah, so I end up with a lot of secondhand books. I have two shelves uh, dedicated to the books that they give me, and I only keep the ones that I'm actually interested in, and the others they have said I can pass on to Goodwill, which I do. So, um, but yeah, and I actually haven't gotten big batches from them lately. Um, but yeah, so this one did come from one friend, um, Untouchable by Jane Ann Krentz. And then I have four more from another friend, um, Whispers at Dusk by Heather Graham. 
and I guess it is the first of a trilogy. Uh, but it sounded like it'd be up my alley. These are smaller ones. Um, Cold Blooded Liar by Karen Rose. Tomorrow's Promise by Sandra Brown. And Obsession by Lisa Jackson. Now, Lisa Jackson, I have a couple other secondhand books by her. I think there's Quarter to Midnight, and I think that one actually takes place in New Orleans because I nearly put it in that video. Um, that never happened. Um, and I actually may already have a copy of this book from our other friend, too. I don't know. But yeah, those seem like really small secondhand books. They seem like little itty bitty pocket books. But, uh,. Yeah, so I don't know, uh, some of these books, I think they're, uh, called mass market paperbacks, is how I'd ex describe them, of that, that genre, I don't know how you, uh, would categorize them, and I don't know if I'm actually, like, too into those, but I would like to try and get into some of these, and I, I mean, they send me so many books, um, and I would like to start reading them so I would like to start sprinkling them more into my videos uh, where I try and read and I thought about doing like a whole uh, month of TBR and just secondhand books as its own video and I may do that eventually uh, if that's something you guys would be interested in just to see if I enjoy these type of books uh, let me know down in the comments below because I would definitely do that and because it's lying next to me, I do kind of want to show this off as well. My sister went to Jerusalem about, uh, it was last month sometime, it was in June. Um, and she brought me back a bookmark. How pretty is that? I don't know if I can even do it justice, like, get the light on it. It's all shiny. But it's like a, a miniature woven carpet bookmark. How cool is that? so pretty and I, I'm like scared to take it out of the packaging and actually use it uh, because it's so pretty um, but yeah so I just kind of wanted to throw that little cherry on the top in there um I think that's it is that finally it I think we're good we're covered okay <laughs> all right so I hope you guys enjoyed this long <laughs> book haul video um i know it's different than what i usually do and hopefully i will try and sprinkle more different stuff in there um i know originally i said i also do gaming and art stuff i just haven't had time to include those videos and make videos uh for that stuff here on the channel it's easier to do reading videos just because most of the time when i'm reading i can do it elsewhere and then talk about it later kind of deal so i just i don't have much time to do much else right now except work read sleep eat that's about it <laughs> so um but yeah i definitely would like to include more art and gaming videos here on the channel um if you guys would enjoy to see that uh let me know or like this video to let me know uh that you would enjoy seeing more of me do other stuff than just reading um because yeah that's the stuff i enjoy but i don't know if that's something you guys would actually like to watch um, you know, people like different things. So I do have a variety of hobbies, a variety of interests, and uh, those are just a couple of mine. So I'd be happy to share them with you guys. Um, but yeah, so let me know down in the comments below all your thoughts, and thank you guys for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. I know it's been a really long one, so if you stuck it out to the end, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for the support, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.